All right, sorry, people at home. My computer crashed. We're one problem in, but we're not too deep. We're solving this thing. Three minus four sine squared theta equals zero. If I want to solve that thing, uh, Kate, what could I do first? Yep, let's get rid of that three. So negative four sine squared theta equals negative three. What could I do next, Ella? Yes, ma'am, divide both sides by negative four. So I get sine squared theta, negative over a negative, so it's really positive, and then it's three-fourths. Now what? What do I want to do next in order to solve that thing? Yeah, just square root, right? We're just square rooting here. I'm going to square root both sides. So sine of theta equals the square root of three-fourths. Can I take the square root of three? No. Nah, so just leave it as square root of three. Can I take the square root of four? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's two. So I can write square root of three over two, but not exactly. It is plus or minus. I am solving an equation, and I found the square root. So since I took the square root in that capacity, it is going to be plus or minus. So now I'm answering the question, when is sine of theta? And again, remember in the beginning, I'm solving this equation between 0 and 2 pi. So everywhere on the unit circle, when is everywhere on my unit circle where my y is going to be plus or minus radical 3 over 2? Technically, what I'm doing is I'm taking the inverse sine of both sides. But these are not restricted domains because we were really solving a sine question. So I'm looking for everywhere that y is going to be plus or minus radical 3 over 2. How many answers am I going to get here? Four. All right, so we were looking for the four places where my sine was radical 3 over 2. Right there, my sine is radical 3 over 2. Boom, right there. Right there, right there, and right there. So my answers are going to be pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. Those are the four answers to my question based on what was happening there. So pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. Notice that all of my answers have the same denominator. That will be true at least initially um, as we look. Questions there? Let's try another one. 5 secant theta. Minus 8 is equal to 2. I'm just solving. So just use your normal solve rules that you would deal with here. Okay. Sam K, what am I going to do first? Uh, add, eight. add 8. Let's add 8. So 5. Ah, that's an ugly 5. 5 secant theta is going to be equal to 10. I want to solve from there. So now what can I do, Abby? Yup. That's normal, just regular, good old solving. We've never done these problems before, yet we're totally fine. Secant of theta equals 2. I could do inverse secant, but I don't like inverse secant. It just bothers me. I would. I don't like secant. What could I deal with instead? Cosine. So instead of secant, I could write that as cosine. But if I write the left side as cosine, what did I technically just do to the left side? I flipped it. I did the reciprocal. So if I did the reciprocal to the left side, I've got to do the reciprocal to the right side as well. So it's the same thing as cosine of theta equals one half. Great. Now I want to get theta by itself. So again, technically, we are doing the inverse cosine of both sides. Boom, those cancel. Theta equals the inverse cosine of one half. Or in other words, where on your unit circle is your x value going to be one half? Pi over 3, yeah, look, right here, pi over 3, x is 1 half. There's one answer. Where else? 5 pi over 3, down here. Cosine is 1 half at 5 pi over 3. So my two answers are pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Kind of makes sense on what we're doing here with we solve. Again, not a notes day, but it's a notes day. I want you to kind of understand better off what's going on. Okay. All right. Now we've seen the three different types of problems we've done today. We did a basic one to start. Then we did a square root. Then we did a reciprocal one. That's all you're going to work with today. We're going to make sure we're good at it. There's number one. Do it on your board with your neighbor. Go. So when I'm solving this thing, I want to get theta by itself. So we added three, add three. That goes away. 
Then I divide by negative 6, divide by negative 6. So I'm really getting sine of theta is negative 1 half. And so again, technically I'm doing inverse sine on both sides. But all that means is where is my y value going to be 1 half? So if I'm looking at my unit circle, there are two places where my y is going to be a negative 1 half. That is down here at 7 pi over 6 and right there at 11 pi over 6. Those are the two values I'm looking for. Questions on that one? So my two answers are 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Let's do it again. Number 5, go. So when I look at this guy, negative 5 minus 2 cosine, we're going to add 5, add 5. Then we are going to divide by negative 2. So we got negative 1 here. We're going to divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. So cosine of theta is 1 half. So all I'm doing is I'm looking where on my unit circle is my x going to be 1 half. Again, technically I'm doing inverse cosine. Okay, if that bothers you, just think of it the other way. Okay, but where is my x 1 half? Right there at pi over 3 and right there at 5 pi over 3. Those are the two places. Those are my two answers. Those are the basic variety. Okay, great. I'm glad we're doing well with that. Let's get a little bit more difficult. There's number three. Go. We're solving, so I'm going to add two. Add two. Cotangent theta equals negative one. We're getting rid of cotangent. So to get rid of cotangent, we're doing inverse cotangent. Okay, inverse cotangent. You could flip it to tangent if you want to. It doesn't matter. You're really just thinking, where on my unit circle is cotangent going to be negative one? Which two quadrants is cotangent going to be negative one? Two and four, right there and right there. It is at five pi. I'm sorry, just kidding. Three pi over four, because both the x and the y are the same, but one of them is negative. And right there, it's seven pi over four, because both of them are the same and one of them is negative. So theta equals three pi over four and seven pi over four. Let's keep it going. Let's do that one right there. Here we go. We're trying to solve this thing. I'm going to add 1. So I get sine squared theta is equal to 1. Then I'm getting rid of the square. To get rid of the square, we square root. We square root. Sine of theta. What is the square root of 1? Not just 1, but plus and minus 1. You are then thinking, where on this unit circle is my y value going to be 1 or negative 1? Not 1 half. It's 1. It's 1 right there at pi over 2 and right there at 3 pi over 2. Those are the two answers I'm looking for. Pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Next one. Solve it. I think this is our last. Uh, no, one more. See what you can do. Here we go. 2 cosine squared. Theta minus 1, to get rid of the minus 1, I'm going to add 1, add 1. 2 cosine squared equals 1. Divide by 2, divide by 2. Great. What am I going to do next? Get rid of that square. So I'm square root in both sides. So cosine of theta equals the square root of 1 half. What's the square root of 1? The square root of 2 is the square root of 2. But since I took the square root, what else do I got to do? It is plus or minus, okay? That looks strange. If you don't recognize that, then you could rationalize the denominator by multiplying top and bottom by radical 2. You get, oh, radical 2 over 2. That's what we're looking for here. To get rid of cosine, I'm doing inverse cosine on both sides. So really what I'm doing is I'm looking for everywhere that cosine is a plus or minus radical 2 over 2. And that is in every quadrant in the middle at pi over 4, at 3 pi over 4, at 5 pi over 4, and at 7 pi over 4. Those spots are what we're looking for. Questions on that one? All right, let's switch gears here a little bit. Okay, we're doing well with that. Let's talk about where we're headed with this. So far, these are not that difficult of questions. We can get a little more complex, okay? When you ride a Ferris wheel that has a diameter of 40 meters and turns at a rate of two revolutions per minute, the height above the ground of your seat after T minutes 
can be modeled by that equation. All I want you to do, we did modeling last chapter, okay? Look at that equation and talk with your neighbor or somebody nearby. What does each of these things mean in context of the problem? Why do we have a negative 20 out in front? Why do we have a 21? Just talk to each other. Come up with a reason for that. Go. What's something we know here? Somebody got an explanation for one of those parts. Aaron, what you got? Um, the amplitude is 20. Yep, why is the amplitude 20? The is yes, the radius is 20. The diameter is 40 meters, so we need an amplitude of 20 because the radius is 20. I'm going 20 each direction. Wonderful. What else? Aaron? Uh, the, the negative means you start at the bottom of a Ferris wheel. I don't know if you have superpowers or not. But when you get on a Ferris wheel, you get on the bottom because it's negative cosine. Unless you can magically jump on the top, you probably need a negative in there. Great. Uh, the, four pi green means that the, period is the period length is one half. How did you know the period length was one half? Um, it's two pi times Good. So it's we start with our base period length of two pi, then we multiply by the reciprocal. The pi's cancel to oh, it's one half. Does that make sense with what they told me? Yeah, it does because we have two revolutions per minute. So one half. Great. Plus 21. Why is it plus 21? Eli? Uh, the middle of the is 21 meters off. Yeah, why is it at 21 meters off the ground, not 20? You got to be a little bit off. Otherwise, when the people's feet dangle over the edge of the Ferris wheel, every time they go around, they get their feet cut off. Then everyone's defeated, and it's bad. Defeated. All right, so we've got this setup, okay? We make sense of all of that. Here is a graph of that. The question is, based off of that model, after the ride begins, how long is it before your seat is 31 meters off the ground for the first time? How many times is it before you're 31 meters off the ground for the first time? Talk with your neighbor and solve that question. What are we going to do in order to figure out when I'm 31 meters off the ground for the first time? What needs to be 31? H needs to be 31 because I want the height to be 31. So then once I set that up, I'm going to subtract 21. I get negative 20 cosine 4t equals 10, 4 pi t. Uh, then I'm going to divide by negative 20. Cosine of 4 pi t is going to be negative 1 half. I want to get rid of cosine. How would I get rid of cosine? Inverse cosine. Boom, boom. What could I put for that? When is inverse cosine going to be negative 1 half? 2 pi over 3. It happens more than once. It happens at 4 pi over 3 as well. But the question was just the first time. So 2 pi over 3 is going to be sufficient there. And then the last thing I got to do is divide by 4 pi. Multiply by 1 over 4 pi. Those pi's are going to cancel. I get 2 over 12. In other words, it's t equals 1 sixth. My time was in minutes, so that's really at 10 seconds is the first time my Ferris wheel is going to be 31 meters off the ground. In a period length of one minute, or not a period length, but in just the time frame of one minute, how many times are you going to be 31 meters off the ground? Four, why is it four times? You're going up and down twice in a minute, so that means you hit the middle four times. What happens if I speed up the Ferris wheel? Am I going to hit it more or less times? More. And what about this equation would speed up the Ferris wheel? This changing is going to affect how many times you hit the middle during that time period. That is what Monday is all about, is understanding if we change that period length, it's going to affect how many answers we have in that same time frame. Good job today. No homework. We'll continue to work on this on Monday.